So that was something very interesting to share with you today. I wanted to play this short clip from Steve and then we'll kind of get into it. So, um, we said, how do we, how do we leverage our solar IP portfolio, which is pretty massive, into other segments? And uh, we launched a pilot project with, I'd say probably one of the world's largest airlines uh, to solarify with Aptera technology, Aptera panels and electronics, some of the ground handling equipment. And why is that important? Airports all across the world are moving to electrification on the ground equipment. And the ground equipment is some of the most polluting things they have at the airport. The challenge is installing enough chargers at the airport, having a place to charge them. You have slow moving, uh, specialized vehicles that can't really drive long, long distances to get to chargers. So what if they can charge themselves? We thought the airport is really a perfect environment for that because there's no trees. And uh, everything is in the sun all day long. And so um, we've got one of our tractors uh, doing its job at uh, Salt Lake Airport for almost two weeks now, and it hasn't needed to be plugged in at all. So that's all I want to say about that one. So this was pretty exciting for me to hear because I was flying out of Salt Lake City Airport pretty soon after this was mentioned. So I was going to keep my eye out for this vehicle and started looking around when I got there. This was on my way flying out, so I didn't have much time to look around, but this is kind of the smaller kind of luggage carriers. This is kind of one of the main charging hubs that I saw. It was mainly just one that I noticed. So it looks like that's an uh, electric vehicle as well. And a lot of these that I was finding were mainly this one. These are kind of more of the domestic airplanes, so they weren't as big as, say, international ones. So down this is just the, in the battery pack, essentially. There's no solar on the top of this. I actually brought binoculars to kind of get a closer look at these vehicles to see if I could spot anything. So electric, but not solar. And it did kind of help me with the binoculars kind of get the actual models of these, which I'll get into a little later. So I kept looking around, nothing I could see on the way out. One interesting thing that was, I did see on my way there, there was this, this is a smaller plane, but it's remote controlled. You can kind of see the guy with the remote here. He'll take it off in a moment, but he just kind of remotely drives it into place. Kind of interesting. And then these are not solar panels either. So he turned it off and that says remote control. So that was kind of fascinating. On my flight back, I arrived in the morning, so I had plenty of time to look around and see if I could spot this mystery solar powered vehicle. And I even asked like some, actually asked my pilot as I got off if he's seen one and some other people and none of them have seen it or heard of it. Walked around a bit and I got to the very end of the Concord, and I found one that was solar powered. So this one is located basically at the end of this row. So this is south here. This is where you enter the main part of the airport, is through here. And it's all the way in this end. So this is a great spot for the solar powered vehicle to just kind of hang out when it's not in use. So it's this one here. When it's not being used, it's kind of parked here. And so there's solar panels here, that side and the top. Not a, it's hard to guess like how many watts of solar this is. It's maybe kind of comparing this to uh, this Aptera solar coverage. I'd maybe say that I would guess this is maybe I don't know, thousand, 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 thousand. It's maybe like 4,000 is on this, is my rough guess. You know, let me know in the comments what you think. But with only two getting pretty good coverage and this is getting coverage, so maybe it's getting out like two to 3,000 maybe, I don't know. This may be getting some reflective from the ground, maybe just very minimal, but basically nothing. But pretty cool, it's been charging itself 
essentially. And I did bring my binoculars just to kind of see if I could like maybe spot it across the way and kind of walk over to it, but I didn't need it to spot this one, but it did help me pick up the model number, which I'll show you that in a moment. And it's pretty cool to see. I'm pretty sure this is it. You know, I can't, when I zoom, zoomed in with my binoculars, I didn't see anything that said Aptera on it. So it's not like, you know, confirmed, but I didn't see anything else there with solar. This is the only vehicle I saw. So pretty cool. I did get a video of this in action as well. But I bet Delta is pretty happy with it. You know, it's too soon for them to kind of like, you know, order a whole fleet of these, I think. But because obviously they're testing on that little remote controlled thing too. But this is a pretty massive plane. It's not like a little domestic plane. So it has kind of limited use too. It's just for the big planes. But working just fine. to see it in action and there is when i was zooming in on it on this area somewhere back here it said lead acid batteries which i found was kind of odd when i looked up the model number these are actually the traction batteries of lead acid battery which is interesting i'm not sure why they went with that choice so these are this is the model that it was. So you can kind of see that it's just modified with the solar rack on top of it. So, you know, pretty modular. Can I go back to this? You can kind of see it's, you know, it's definitely that Pretty powerful little unit. It's 24 tons, so very heavy. Part of it is just uh, kind of weighted to make sure it doesn't tip when it has the plane attached to it. But it has three electric motors, motors for the drive, two motors at 46 kilowatts each. And the traction batteries is two lead acid batteries, 96 volts at 875 amp hour. So that's the battery pack that's basically in this middle part here. Yeah, so this middle part. So it's actually in shade from the solar, which might even actually help the batteries. So kind of interesting. This is, I didn't see many big vehicles like this at the Salt Lake Airport. Most of them I saw were this little guy. And this is electric as well. And this one, This is actually from their model. This was the biggest EV option after this. It kind of gets into more like the diesel powered ones and the other one is 150. Yeah, so this guy, so 31 kilowatts for each motor versus the uh, 46, not a huge difference, but Yeah, very cool to kind of see that in person. It's an awesome idea. I'm curious if it'll expand to their other vehicles. Like it's like for these little vehicles, I don't you know this little top wouldn't be enough to really give it anything meaningful. You know, maybe if they had it on top, but then you have to have wires running to this main vehicle, which is certainly possible. So I think maybe that could be their next step is that this would be kind of hard to put solar on because it just has a lot of potential for things falling on it in the solar. Can't really go here because this is people could step up on that. These little guys are just too small. So I think that's their next best option or, or maybe even 
or figuring out how to add it to these guys because I saw most of the Delta aircrafts were powered by these guys. So pretty fascinating. Let me know your thoughts on this. So yeah.